So I've been running a backup on my furnace back here for about the last uh, almost two years. So this is kind of what I would do differently and these are the things that I liked and I'll uh, kind of go over how I hooked the whole thing up for you. Alright so before doing any of this stuff uh, in your own house make sure you check with local building codes and uh, I don't know stuff. Stuff is at your own risk. So when I started out the emergency switch to the furnace just connected right up through the back and wired down to my furnace and it came in over here. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that this thing switched automatically. So as soon as the power went out it automatically kicked in and nobody needed to intervene. So this is how I achieved that. So I installed this unit here which is a Xantrix uh, Freedom X 1000 sine wave inverter and uh, what this does is the power comes into this unit through the back either from the AC power source or from the batteries. I don't know if you can see that there. Oh yeah, there's the two battery wires. And this unit will switch automatically between the mains power. Uh, if it's available, it'll use that as a first priority. If that's not available, it's gonna automatically switch over to the batteries which are underneath. So what I did for the wiring is the wiring came from the panel box to this switch right over here. And from this switch, it went down into the furnace. To change that up, I disconnected right on the back side of where my fingers are. To change that up is the wire that came from here and went down to the furnace. I instead brought that down to uh, right into the in back of the inverter, into the input, and then I ran the wire, power wire back up from the inverter back up into that box. I also took an additional wire and I ran it to this plug over here which is a place for me to uh, charge the inverter and it also is a place for uh, me to uh, tap off and use power if the power is out to charge a cell phone or anything like that. Another plus side of wiring it this way is that emergency switch on the outside will still shut off the furnace even if it's off of the battery power or off the inverter. So that emergency switch still works 100% of the time. So down underneath the inverter, I've got two lead acid batteries. Now I just picked these up from a, a local uh, Canadian tire and I just grabbed literally the cheapest batteries I could find. And I did this only because I wasn't sure if this whole setup was gonna work. So I didn't wanna invest a whole ton of money into it and have it not work out for me. Those batteries have wires running up into the back of the inverter. There's a positive and a negative. There's two lead acid batteries and they're just ran in parallel. So this is 12 volt input in. Now I've also taken and after the fact, I wired up uh, this unit here, which just kind of keeps track of the electricity and the current. So I can kind of monitor how well the battery performance is. Now because this is just an inverter, this isn't an, an inverter charger. I did also need to uh, put a charger onto this thing to keep the batteries topped off in case they do need to kick in that they are always at their peak voltage. To do that was pretty easy. I had one of these battery maintainers just kind of sitting around so this is what I hooked up and I just hooked that onto the battery. The downside of doing this is that battery charger is still hooked into the live plug that actually uh, will run off the batteries in case of a power outage. So uh, it's just drawing power when it doesn't need to be drawing power, killing battery life, inverting and then going kind of in a loop. I guess uh, if I had thought about it or maybe is something I'll still add on later on is put another live plug there that it'll automatically just go when the uh, furnace or when the house has power and when the house doesn't have power it'll automatically uh, will just cut out. So as far as reliability goes uh, this thing has been in here for just about two years. Uh, we've had several power outages uh, during that time and every time uh, it's needed to come on it's kicked in and it's worked flawlessly. I guess if I were building this system again here's some of the things that I would change. Probably one of the first things that I would change is I would buy higher quality batteries than what's in there. I would have uh, a lead acid uh, or an AGM glass mat battery or I would probably go with a lithium titanate cell if I had the uh, resources to get them easily. The second thing that I'd likely change is I'd also put uh, a different inverter in there. I recently took uh, a look at the Xantrex that's in here for a friend 
and the uh, price has gone up astronomically. I think they're like 2,000 bucks right now. That being said, there's nothing wrong with the Xantrex brand. Like this inverter is rock solid. It's worked perfectly. But for two grand, there's gotta be better options out there. And I'd also want one that has a built-in charger so I didn't have to put the charger in kind of on my own. I'd have a sine wave inverter charger with automatic switching. That's That to me would be uh, the must. Now as far as regrets go, or uh, do I regret putting this system in? Uh, the answer is absolutely not. It's uh, a couple of times it's been down to minus, uh, very close to minus 40 degrees. So that's the same in Fahrenheit or Celsius. That's brutally cold outside. Uh, we were without power for several hours and we were totally fine. And a lot of the neighbors down the street were not uh, quite as fortunate. Their houses got pretty dang cold. Possible upgrades to this system that would make it work even better is to connect it to either some kind of internal power source like a generator. And this Xantrex unit does have a port on the back where you can put another power source on. So I could connect it to a gen set. I think it even automatically starts it if need be. Uh, or something like a solar panel or a small wind turbine and that would carry you through the worst of the worst weather. The capacity for this thing in real time, it goes for about eight hours, give or take, and that's kind of depending on the uh, temperature outside. If it's brutally cold, obviously we're gonna use more power because the furnace fan needs to run longer. If you're interested in building a system like this, I will leave links down in the description below to uh, what I think are good solid parts uh, to put this thing together today.